Greetings, welcome, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Ask the Stones. I am so happy and honored to have you join me, so thank you so much. And many thanks to Dennis for this week's question. How do you start your day to ensure a positive and productive day ahead? Thank you, Dennis, for this question. Um, this is the first time I've gotten a question like this about productivity and um, the way that, that I start my day and even just some ideas on how to start the day in general for positivity. So thanks, Dennis, for this great question. Um, I'll start off by talking a little bit about my morning routine, what I like to do in the morning, and I'll talk about maybe some uh, other tips that might be helpful for you. And even, Dennis, I'm, I'm feeling the need to talk a little bit about positivity and, and productivity in general. So we'll talk a little bit about that too. So thank you. So Dennis, the way that I personally start my day, now I am going to say, uh, I cannot claim that this ensures a positive and productive day. Uh, I cannot claim that this is the best kind of morning routine to have, and maybe really the best way to ensure you have a positive and productive day is really all about what works best for you. So Dennis, this is what I do. First, when I wake up in the morning, um, and I do not wake up at the same time every day. I do not use an alarm clock. Uh, I typically wake up at the same time without an alarm clock. Uh, and that's anywhere from five o'clock to, um, oh, 6.30 is actually late for me. So if I wake up at 6.30, um, it's, it's, it's a late morning for me. Um, but generally left to my own devices right now, and that could change in the future, I typically wake up around 5.30. And so what I'll do is first I will um, give Reiki, send Reiki to all of my chak chakras, not for too long, just, just some quick Reiki. Uh, I recite every morning a phrase that I have recited for years now, and I have it hanging above my bed. And that quote is, today is a day of completion. I give thanks for this perfect day. Miracle shall follow miracle and wonders shall never cease. And this is a quote from uh, a book called The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. This book, everyone, is actually in the public domain. It's an old book from the 1920s. Um, it's a book, uh, uh, it's called um, New Thought, and it's really a, the genre that gave rise to things like um, The Secret and uh, Manifestation and, um, you know, your, your, your um, words influencing your experience and your beliefs and, and all of, you know, that kind of stuff that The Secret talks about actually started with New Age thought, a whole genre of books from around the 1920s. And those are all in the public domain, which means that you can find them for free online and read them for free. Uh, you can find audiobooks of them on YouTube for free. Just look up New Age, or I'm sorry, New Thought, and, and that'll give you lots of texts. And one of those is The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. When I read that book years ago, I loved that quote so much that I... Um, created an art print of it, hung it above my bed, and I recite that every morning. I do believe that every day is a miracle, and every day is reason to give thanks and praise. And so I, I like to start my day just by saying thank you for this perfect day. Uh, then I jump out of bed, and um, I will, uh, in my morning, go for a walk. So first thing, I'll put on my shoes and socks. I will go outside. It does not matter what the weather is, how cold it is, uh, rain, whatever. I will go for a walk. And uh, this walk lasts varying lengths of time. Ideally, I like it to last around 45 minutes. Uh, when I'm rushed, it doesn't last as long. I like to get in at least a couple of blocks, but I'll do some stretching and, and some light exercising along with that. 
during my walk uh, around the block I will come home and I will give thanks to the four directions so I recognize and honor the four directions Father Earth and Mother Sky as well um, I will maybe work in my garden a little bit depending upon the time of year and I will do some Tai Chi then I will come in and meditate and uh, play my flute, my Native American style flute, and then I will do some push-ups and sit-ups and uh, stretching. Um, and I'll do that while I'm listening to an audiobook or some YouTube videos. And then I'll eat breakfast. That's my morning routine. And honestly, ideally, that lasts for an hour and a half, sometimes almost two hours is my morning routine. Actually, some mornings I'll get up at 5.30 and I don't end up eating breakfast until almost nine. So um, yes, that is my morning routine. Now, Dennis, does that ensure a positive and productive day for me? No, I can't. I cannot make any claims that it will do anything for your positivity or productivity. But this is how I like to start my morning. This is the way that I start my morning to ground myself, to center myself, um, to give thanks for the day, to prepare myself for the day, um, and uh, to to just uh, enjoy the morning. I am a morning person, in case you couldn't tell from that early rising time with no alarm. Um, I'm a morning person and I love to be up and out in the morning. Um, I wake right up. I don't drink coffee for the caffeine. I actually drink mostly decaf for the taste. And so when I make my coffee with breakfast, it only ever has a little bit of caffeine in it. Um, So, uh, I'm just a morning person and, and always have been. I love the morning. And are there ways that I could improve upon my morning? Yes, of course. Is this the way that my morning routine has always gone? No, no way. And is it the way my morning routine will always go? No, guaranteed it'll change um, as I decide to change things about my morning. Um, But some other things that, that some people do, Dennis, they may do morning gratitude. I think this is a great thing to sit down and make a list of things that you are thankful for. Uh, Julia Cameron in her book, The Artist's Way, I definitely recommend checking that book out. Even for those of you who don't identify as, quote, an artist, I do believe that we are all creative and that we are all creative types. And um, so a book like The Artist's Way, even for those who don't identify as quote, artists or quote, creative. I think we're all creative artists. It's a great book. And Julia Cameron, uh, she advocates morning pages. So journaling, essentially, in the morning. I personally do journal every day, but I do that in the evening. Um, And I think that that, uh, Julia makes, uh, Cameron makes a great claim for doing it in the morning. And I, and I, uh, appreciate that. And, and yes, I think that, that doing morning pages is really beneficial. And, um, uh, that is another thing. Um, there is a coach named Hal Elrod and he wrote a book called The Miracle Morning and Hal really breaks it down into seven things to do every morning to create a really powerful morning routine. So he advocates, um, uh, gosh, a few things, but things like um, visualizing, so visioning, um, some exercise, uh, reading, um, silence, so meditating or sitting quietly. So Hal advocates for uh, some of the things that that I like to do for my morning routine as well. There are plenty of ideas out there for morning routines. I think one thing that's really helpful is setting intention and knowing the things that you would like to maybe not necessarily accomplish 
during the day, though that can be helpful too, you know, a to-do list. But I mean more so just the kind of person that you want to be going into the day. Who do you want to be, Dennis, as you move through your day? Maybe completing tasks, maybe interacting with people, whatever it is you might be doing for that day, who is it that you want to be and how do you want to show up? So I think setting intention for the day is really important. And, you know, that's something that if, if you meditate, Dennis, or have moments of silence in your morning, that's something that, that you could easily incorporate into uh, those moments, that meditation or uh, moments of silence. So there are plenty of ideas on how to uh, create an effective morning routine. But I think ultimately the way that we start our day if we want to be positive and productive, I ultimately think that the best thing that we can do is to start our day in a positive way. The way in which we start the day oftentimes will carry us through for maybe not the whole day, but definitely at least the first part of the day. And so when we approach our morning with intention, this is going to really help us to start off the day in the way that we want the day to go. So ways that I think are really helpful to start our day off are with gratitude. Certainly gratitude is wonderful. So the way that this looks for me is giving thanks just as soon as I wake up, but then definitely when I am showing gratitude for the four directions, Father Earth and Mother Sky, I'm giving thanks at that time. And so when I am moving through uh, my space and honoring the four directions, I'm doing so with gratitude, honoring Father Sky and Mother Earth with gratitude. And so I am a big believer in gratitude. And I think that if there's any way to start your day in a positive way, it is with gratitude. I believe that is the number one way to start your day with positivity. So Dennis, I highly advocate gratitude, however that looks to you. And that might be making a list of things you're grateful for. That might be um, just thanking all of the things that you use throughout your morning, the coffee maker, the refrigerator, the table where you sit to eat breakfast, all of those things, yourself, whatever it might be, but just saying thank you to all of those things. So definitely, if you want to have a positive day, I do advocate for starting it off with gratitude. You know, the idea of productivity is a little tricky, I think. And I think it's a little tricky because I think culturally speaking, we really put a lot of emphasis on productivity and being productive. And we worry about, am I being productive enough? And, um, oh no, I'm spending time, you know, on my morning walk. Some might say that is a waste of time, Christian. That's not being productive. You could use that time in better ways. Well, okay, and I find it to be very centering and grounding and very peaceful and a relaxing, wonderful way to start the day and to start it getting my body moving. And to me, that is not a waste of time. That's an important part of my day, a blessed part of my day. And so I think that culturally speaking, we have a little bit of a challenge with this idea of productivity. And so I want to advocate maybe not worrying so much, Dennis, about being so productive. Um, and maybe rather than putting the focus on productivity, putting the focus on things that really light your fire and things that you really enjoy and things that really fill you up. So making sure that you are filling up your cup. To me, that's pretty productive. Um, so, you know, could you do things in your morning that are going to be more productive than others, like 
creating a to-do list or, um, you know, maybe knocking th some things off of that to-do list right away. Yes, yes, you could. And for me personally, I like to be centered, grounded, uh, relaxed, and ready to go for my day. To me, that, is, that preparation is more important than just using that time to scratch a few more things off of the to-do list. So Dennis, I really want to encourage you with this idea of productivity to give yourself permission to do things that might outwardly not seem so productive, like um, taking a walk like I do, or um, meditating. Some people would say meditating is not very productive because you're just sitting there not doing anything. But we know from studies that meditation actually helps you to be more productive. And so I think, Dennis, I want to encourage you to really consider what is centering and grounding and helpful for you in filling up your cup rather than putting the focus on this idea of being productive and creating a productive way. And you know, the truth too is that you could have the most quote unquote productive morning routine. You could have the best morning routine. And Dennis, there is no shortage of people out there who will tell you with gusto all about their morning routine, what they do. As a matter of fact, I personally love to hear what others do for their morning routines. I just find it really interesting and I find it um, really nice to hear about what other people do. I, so I like uh, hearing about people's morning routines. Um, and I think that you can have the most wonderful morning routine. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the rest of the day is going to unfold in exactly the way you plan it or want it or envision it, or it's going to be the absolutely most productive thing just because you went on a walk and you did your Tai Chi and you honored the four directions and played some flute. You know, that does not mean that I'm going to have the most productive day. It does mean, however, that I'm starting my day off in a very relaxed and uh, empowered and joyful kind of way. So Dennis, I really want to encourage you to maybe rather than focus on that idea of productivity for your morning uh, and uh, making a, a productive day, I want to encourage you to instead focus on a joyful morning that helps you to have a joyful day. I think that's so much more important than our cultural notions of productivity. Yes, Dennis, that is wonderful. Um, I think one thing that is also just really helpful for us in the morning period is just getting outside. I think that getting outside, getting some fresh air uh, goes a long way in helping to wake ourselves up. So, you know, if you're the kind of person who you really need coffee in the morning and you are not a human being until you have had several cups of coffee, you need the caffeine, you're waking up tired and you just don't feel right in the morning until you have perked up with caffeine. Um, actually, I would recommend considering going outside first, just getting yourself outside, no matter the weather, breathe the air, move a little bit, get yourself outdoors because we know that uh, nature has a wonderful way of awakening our senses and it has a wonderful way of calming us and centering us and uh, actually is a natural kind of pick-me-up. So nature or even just getting outside is, is very stimulating. It's like having a cup of coffee itself. I know some of you are thinking, no way, Christian, that is not the same thing. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, but for me, you know, uh, 
once I get outside and I breathe some fresh air and I get to walking, it really wakes me up. Even if I've had a rough night and haven't slept well, uh, it really wakes me up. And of course, you know, I don't even need that cup of coffee for the caffeine after I've been out walking for a few blocks. So I do recommend just getting outside. Whatever your morning routine might look like, Dennis, I do recommend that outside be a component of it. And as I mentioned, I'm a big believer in gratitude, so I do encourage gratitude in the morning as well. So many things that you can do, Dennis, and so many different ways to approach your morning. Those are some of the ways that I like to approach my morning. Um, and that has changed from what it used to be. And like I said, it'll look different in the future too. Um, but the one thing that is important to me for my morning is intention. And so whatever my morning routine might look like in the future, I know that any changes I make will be with intention. So I will purposefully be uh, bringing those changes in. You know, like with morning pages, for instance, there was a point, I have written a journal for many, many years, 20 years. Uh, there was a point several years ago where I was doing it in the morning. And so I was doing specifically, quote, as Julia Cameron calls them, morning pages. Um, and so that, that was a part of my morning. And who knows, maybe I'll bring that back in and incorporate that. Maybe I will bring in some other kinds of in intentioning for my morning, but I do know that it will be with intention. Whatever I do for my morning routine in the future will be purposeful and planned. And that's, I think, really the core here, Dennis, is this idea of intention and not letting your morning get away from you, not letting your morning rule you, but rather you taking control of your morning. And that's really going to go a long way to helping you set the tone for your whole day. Now, I do also want to say, Dennis, that when it comes to our morning and starting our day, oh, and let me just say here that some people start their day in the evening. You know, let's not forget that there are people who work at night and who sleep during the day. And so their morning is going to be evening and vice versa. So let's not forget that. So it's really about when you get up. So the first things you do upon waking, um, when I say morning routine, this is what I am referring to. And for those of you out there listening who do have that kind of flipped schedule, just know that when I say morning routine, I really mean um, getting up routine, starting your day, whenever it occurs, kind of routine. Now, Dennis, I do want to say that, yes, this idea of intention is just the key. And I think something that's also helpful is setting up yourself for the morning, the evening before. So I actually believe that the morning, that your day starts the evening before so that your day actually started last night with getting yourself ready for bed, getting a good night's sleep, preparing for the day ahead. So I think that honestly, setting that intention in the morning is really key and having a strong morning routine that fills you with joy and fills up your cup is really important. And I also think that it's important not to discount the evening and to recognize that your morning actually starts the evening before. And uh, having an intentional evening routine to help you um, settle down, wind down the day, reflect on the day, uh, to set intention for the next day, to prepare yourself for sleep, I think all of that is really important. And so my day starts the evening before with um, just preparing myself for sleep. I have a cup of tea every evening and write in my journal every evening. I turn off all screens. 
um, at least half an hour before bedtime, oftentimes more like an hour before bedtime when I'm writing in my journal longhand and uh, having my cup of tea and um, then uh, heading off to bed. And uh, I will also the evening before write my to-do list for the next day so I know the things that I need to accomplish and reflect upon what is coming up the next day. So I do all of that the day before. That allows me then, Dennis, to really enjoy my morning routine without having to think about what I'm doing that day because I've already thought about it the night before. I already know what's on the list, the things that I want to do. And um, so that frees up that energy to be able to enjoy my walk and not think about it to, you know, wondering, okay, what do I got to do today? I got to do this. I got to do this. Oh, I can't forget to do that. Nope. I've already done that thinking the night before. Um, it allows me to just enjoy my exercises and be present in the moment without thinking about all the things I have to do and trying to remember them because they've already been written down. I don't have to remember. It's right there on the list when I am ready to tackle it after breakfast. So that is how I start my day. Now, does it ensure a positive and productive day? I mean, I think that it really helps. And I can't say that it ensures that, you know, because we can have the most amazing morning routine. And if, uh, if we, um, kind of move out of the present moment, if we um, become unfocused, if we uh, have other things that pop up, you know, those can affect productivity and positivity. I think just always bringing things back to the moment and considering and focusing on the moment is really helpful for keeping us positive and productive. That P word <laughs> that I think culturally can be kind of destructive for us with our focus on productivity. So rather than focusing on productivity, Dennis, maybe just focusing on having a joyful morning that um, just gives praise for the new day and the beauty of a new day. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so Dennis, we've had two Archangel cards pop out for you, and let's see what the angels might have to say about this question and about your situation, Dennis. So, um, two cards, Claire Sentience. Archangel Raguel says, notice your recurring physical and emotional feelings as they signify, signify divine guidance. Mm, great message. Yes, absolutely. I like this a lot. I think that when it comes to your start of your day, Dennis, allow your feelings to guide you. Allow your feelings to help you determine what is going to fill up your cup and what is going to be helpful for you. So, uh, you know, that donut, if you think about eating the donut in the morning, does that make you feel good inside or does it make you feel a little blech? I can say that oftentimes just thinking about eating a donut for me personally makes me feel blech. I also have to say, Dennis, that part of my morning routine is that I eat oatmeal every morning. So <laughs> I'll make overnight oats, uh, a big pot of it, a little crock pot of it and put it in my fridge and I will eat that for several days. And um, so what you eat is going to be important for your morning and setting the right tone for the day. But something as simple as that, you know, asking yourself, okay, for breakfast, I think I'm thinking about eggs. How does that feel in my body? And allow your body to help guide you. Um, if you get quiet and if you listen, your body will give you signals. And so if you get quiet and listen and ask your body about different kinds of activities, you'll get a feeling of whether or not they energize and empower you or drain you. 
And so definitely for your morning, you want to go with things that are going to energize and empower you. So the donut, when you think about eating the donut for breakfast, how does that feel in your body? And allowing those feelings to guide you, not only with what you eat, but with what you do. You know, okay, I'm thinking for my morning about... Um, maybe doing some um, prayers. Okay, when you envision doing prayers in the morning, how does that feel to you? How does that feel in your body? Does that feel empowering? Does that feel energizing? Does that feel draining? And allowing your feelings to guide you for your own morning routine and start to your day, Dennis, I think is a wonderful message from the angels. So thank you very much, angels, for this great uh, advice for our morning. Notice your physical and emotional feelings. This is divine guidance. This is guidance from your higher power, Dennis, telling you what is going to best fill up your cup for the morning. And the second card that popped out is courage. Interesting, Dennis. Archangel Ariel says, be courageous and stand up for your beliefs. Now, Dennis, when it comes to our mourning, I have to say that I'm really fortunate. Uh, I live alone, which means that I don't have anyone else vying for my attention in the morning. I don't have anyone else who uh, maybe wants to use the bathroom when I want to use it, or who is going to make noise when I'm trying to meditate, or who is going to yell out the door at me whenever I am honoring the four directions walking around my garden. You know, I don't have that. So I have a real luxury here, Dennis, in that my mornings are mine and for me. What I'm picking up from this card, Dennis, is just allowing yourself the space to have morning time for yourself and to not feel guilty of that. So being able to carve out time for yourself for your morning, doing the things that are going to fill up your cup and help to set your tone, set the tone for your day. The idea here is to not make apologies for that and to uh, lovingly and compassionately explaining to others who might be sharing your home that you are starting this different kind of morning routine and that this is really important to you and that you would just really appreciate their um, assistance with you and their encouragement in this morning routine and creating one and sticking to it. You know too, Dennis, you might want to include others in your morning routine, and that's completely appropriate. Um, of course, I do mine by myself, and I like it that way. I prefer it that way because it's a chance for me to center and ground myself, which I think are important things to be able to do by yourself. And it doesn't mean that you might not appreciate having some aspects of your morning routine done with others. And uh, the important thing here, Dennis, is that you are advocating for yourself when you want and need time to fill up your cup alone. So there's never any need to apologize for that. So I think that really what Archangel Ariel is saying with this courage card uh, in saying be courageous and stand up for your beliefs, what I'm really getting from this is just the acknowledgement that um, if you have others in the home, children, pets, partners, loved ones, parents, whoever, whatever, that might be vying for your attention and that might uh, be impacting the way in which you approach your morning, that it's absolutely okay to carve out time for yourself and to not feel guilty about that and to make sure that, that you are able to spend time 
for yourself, with yourself, doing the things that fill up your cup. Again, Dennis, I want to encourage you to approach those conversations from a compassionate and loving and understanding kind of way. Uh, and that, of course, is always very helpful in how we uh, negotiate things like uh, space in a home that we share. So please, I encourage you, Dennis, to make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do for you in the morning and not being apologetic about that. At the same time, being understanding of how that may impact others. Uh, Dennis, I'll pull another card for you. Let's see here, Dennis. I am going to pull a rune for you for your morning. And let's see what the runes might have to say about starting our day for positivity and productivity. Hmm. Oh, ho. so interesting, Dennis. This is the rune of separation. And this is so fascinating to have. What I'm getting from this rune right now, Dennis, is this idea of whatever you're doing now, change it. So whatever morning routine you have right now, I'm, I'm picking up the encouragement to separate yourself from it. And when we separate ourselves from things, it does not mean that we have to get rid of everything. You know that saying, throw out the baby with the bathwater? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a terrible saying, but it's that idea here, Dennis. You know, just because you want to change something up, um, it does not mean that everything has to change. It does not mean that you have to scrap everything. So Dennis, this is what I'm getting with the rune of separation, that you are being called to change what you're doing in the morning. And Dennis, it doesn't mean that you have to change everything. Separation does not mean completely overhauling and redoing everything. We absolutely can keep the things that are working for us. And so, Dennis, if there are things about your morning that are working for you, I encourage you to keep those and to keep them with intention. That's the important thing here about separation, Dennis, is that when we make a separation, when we make a change, when we want to do something new, when we want to um, break away from something old, it's all about intention. So focusing on the things that you do want to keep, the things that you do want to leave behind, and the things that you do want to change and bring into your life. So Dennis, I am going to recommend for you to sit down and contemplate your current morning routine. Even if it's not a set routine, you're like, yeah, I get up, I go to the bathroom, I make some coffee, I check my phone, I turn on the TV, and I eat breakfast and I go to work. That's a morning routine. You know, and, or even if it might look a little different from one day to the next, humans are creatures of habit. And typically, our days, our mornings especially, look pretty similar to one another because we, we get into those habits. The trick here, Dennis, is to contemplate those habits and to look to change them with intention. So I encourage you to sit down and maybe even just list what your morning currently looks like and contemplating that, contemplating what fills you up and what drains you, contemplating what is joyful for you and what you don't like about your morning. And starting from there and then asking yourself, okay, if I want to separate myself from some of these behaviors and listing out what those things are that you want to get rid of or not do anymore or decrease, asking yourself, what are the things that I want to bring in to my morning? What are the things that I want to incorporate? Maybe it's some yoga. Maybe it's some mantras. Maybe it's, you know, something else that you find really enriching. But 
contemplating that and setting the intention to bring those things into your morning. This is going to really help you to create a morning, a custom created morning for you that really helps you to feel centered and grounded and joyful and ready for the day. I know for me personally, when I don't get my morning routine in, I just don't feel like I'm starting the day off the way I want to. Now, does it mean I don't have a positive and productive day? No, no, I can still have a positive and productive day without uh, doing my full morning routine. But I know I absolutely feel physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually the best when I'm able to do my full morning routine. So I have just shuffled the breeze easy, Breathe Easy cards for you, Dennis, and I'm going to pull one last card for your morning. And the card that popped out very gently, but very insistently, popping, falling right out, is compassion. I am compassionate. Compassion is the life breath of peace, love, and healing. I breathe in compassion for all beings who have also breathed within the cycle of birth, living, and death. I am filled with forgiveness for my own mistakes. I breathe out fear, anger, and envy. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Dennis, of course, this card definitely goes back to my encouragement to you, to uh, any person that, or even animal or thing that your morning routine might impact to have discussion, compassionate discussions with them about it. And yes, your animals too. You can talk. If you have animals getting you up in the morning, you can talk to them about your morning routine. Uh, but what I'm also getting from this card, Dennis, is an encouragement for self-compassion. I am filled with forgiveness for my own mistakes. So I want to encourage you, if your morning has not looked in the way that you would like it to look, or it has not been filled with the activities you would like it to be filled with, forgive yourself. Release that and say, this is not the separate yourself from that in, in, in a compassionate way. You know, this is not the kind of morning that I want to have anymore. And rather than focusing on the morning that you don't want to have, focusing on the morning that you do want to have and doing that with compassion, compassion for yourself, for the mornings that you have had and compassion for yourself for the creation of a joyful morning and also, Dennis, compassion for yourself when your morning routine gets thrown off and your morning isn't exactly the way that you might envision it. On any given day, there are things that very well may interrupt your morning routine, even one that you have established and that fills you up and makes you feel joyful and that you love and is wonderful, there are going to be things that come up where it's going to be a challenge for you to have your whole morning and to enjoy it. And I want to encourage you at those times to have some compassion for yourself and recognizing that, um, even if you don't have a, quote, perfect morning, it does not mean that you cannot have a positive and productive day. So self-compassion is always so important, even when we are talking about something like not being able to have your full morning routine on certain mornings. So Dennis, thank you so much for this really interesting question. Thank you. Um, and I really encourage any and all of you listening who might have morning routines that you really enjoy and that fill up your cup, please share those tips 
and tactics. What do you do for your morning routine? I know that I would love to hear all about your morning routines. I love hearing about what people do for their morning routines. So please do comment on your morning routines. And I encourage you to send encouragement to one another for our own morning routines and making those out to be a joyful start to the day that centers and grounds us and fills up our cups. So I thank you all. I send you blessings and best wishes for your morning, for your intentional routine, for the filling up of your cup, and for morning joys. And I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. I do invite you to do so so that you can get notices uh, every week of the Ask Your Stone, Ask the Stones series, and so that you can also get your monthly Choose One of Three card reading messages for each month. Of course, this is July, and so July's card reading is available on the YouTube channel. Just check out the Choose One of Three card reading for July for your July messages. And if you subscribe, you'll get that right away. So thank you all so much. I appreciate you. I send you blessings and best wishes. Again, I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing Company, encouraging your journey through life's changes, challenges, and transitions. Thank you and best wishes for your journey.